Good morning, friends, and welcome to worship. We have a few announcements for you as we get ready to meet today and worship God. The dates for the rummage sale have been set for June 10th to 11th. The setup will happen on June 4th, and then donations can come in beginning June 5th through June 8th. We encourage you to keep donations at home until that point if you can. Sign-up sheets will be posted, and we definitely need everyone's help to help make sure that the sale is a success. If you have questions or concerns, let us know, and we'll be happy to get you the answers. We are currently accepting jewelry for the rummage sale, so if you have some jewelry you would like to donate, you can bring it into the office, and we will get it to Allison Lord. The women will be having their May meeting at 12.30 at the home of Sandy Peoples. If you have questions about that, you can ask Sandy, and she could get you more information. Women of Trinity are invited to the 2022 Presbyterian Women Eastern Regional Gathering, June 3rd through 4th of 22, at the Church on the Mall in Plymouth Meeting. If you have questions about that, you could contact Barb Brinker and she could get you more information. There's a Trinity 60th anniversary celebration on June 12th of 2022, and we hope that you all plan on being there. Lemonade on the Lawn will return on May 15th, so plan on hosting one of those if you're able and coming to enjoy them as you can. Men's Club will be meeting on the 7th at 8.30 at Lums. There are some upcoming dates that we need liturgists for. Please be sure to sign up as you are able, and Nicole will be able to get you the information for the bulletin. Our flower chart is up, and there are some dates that are available. We encourage you to sign up as you are able to provide the flowers for worship. We do have a congregational meeting today. It is my last Sunday here, and so we have a congregational meeting to dissolve the call. We encourage members to stay for that short meeting and then to join us following for a reception in the Miracle Building. There's a note from Barb, Co Barb Rinker saying thank you for your notes and cards while she was sick. We're glad to have her back with us. Newsletter articles are due May 26th. If you'd like to help with Meals on Wheels, there's some availability in that schedule. Let Meryl know. We're excited to have all of you here with us for worship. We're excited to have families who are here for baptisms, and we're excited to have our regular members who are here as well. Let us gather together this morning to begin our worship of the Lord with our prelude. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Now we will have our call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. In our anguish we cried to the Lord, and he answered by setting us free. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. The Lord is our strength and our song. He has become our salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. We will not die but live, and will pro proclaim that the Lord what the Lord has done. 
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is a This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. We're going to have a slight program change as we prepare for the baptisms. We're going to have our anthem. I want to invite Harper Rose to come down first for her baptism. Good morning. 
Friends, in baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God and we are part of God's family. God frees us from sin and death and unites us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined in Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Let us remember with joy our own baptism as we celebrate this baptism. On behalf of the session, I present Harper Rose Webston Forensic to receive the sac sacrament of baptism. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you desire that Harper be baptized? Yes. If so, say, I do. I do. Relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach it to her? If so, say, I do. I do. You have publicly professed your faith. Will you be a faithful member of this congregation, share in its worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? If so, say, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. Do you, as members of the congregation and the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Harper and her family by word and deed with love and prayer, encouraging them to know and follow Christ as faithful members of the church? If so, say, we do. We do. As God embraces you in this covenant, we ask you to reject sin and to profess your faith in Christ Jesus and to confess the faith of the church. Trusting in the gracious mercy of Jesus Christ, do you renounce the, power, the ways of sin and the power of evil in the world? If so, say, I do. I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ, accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? If so, say, I do. I do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? If so, say, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. Are you ready? We're going to pray. Gracious God, take this water and set it apart from its ordinary purpose. Help it to be a font of rebirth in which there is the promise of Jesus' resurrection for all of us, but especially for Harper. Set us apart from our ordinary lives that we might love and serve you every day. We ask these things in your son's name. Amen. You ready? baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, Harper Rose Frenchek. You are God's beloved child with whom he is well pleased. Are you all wet now? <laughs> yeah. Let's say a prayer. Gracious God, we give thanks for Harper, for her life and the way she already models your faith. We give thanks for the chance to be present with her and to love her in all the seasons. Help us to be her church and her family, loving her as we loved her mother and showing them the ways to live the faith every day. We ask these things in your son's name. Amen. Congratulations and welcome to the church. Did you get all wet? It'll dry quick, I promise. All right, before you go, we have a little blanket for you, and we have a baptism certificate. There you go. Say thank you. You're welcome. I do. Live the Christian. Share Calling to. We. And to. So that she 
brother of Jesus Christ even when she members of the church of Jesus in As covenant, do His grace and help us to know that the resurrection you have promised to. Kinsley Willow Nat, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. You are one of God's family now, beloved, called, and claimed. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you have claimed us from the very beginning, that you love us from the moment we are created, that you call each of us to come and serve in ways large and small. Continue to be transforming the life of this little one so that she might love and serve you this day and every day. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You ready? Boom. And that's her blankie. Thank you. That is hers. You got it right. You got it right. Do you want to get her certificate too? Good job. Welcome to the church. Welcome to Trinity. We are so excited to have you. Yay. Now listen to the call to confession. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. Therefore, he will rise up to show you compassion. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. Now join me in the prayer of confession. Holy God. We groan at our weaknesses, and we ask forgiveness. Your word is so clear, and your grace is so good. But we close our ears to your call, and with our perverse pride, we follow the gifts you have given us. Like your servant Paul, we know what you require of us. Yet like Paul, what we do is not the good we want to do. And the evil we do not want to do, that evil we keep on doing. We mistreat those we love, and we dishonor you, the one who made us. How long, O oh Lord, will we continue to ignore your will? Yet you provide streams of living mercy. You invite us again and again to live renewed lives. So we turn once again to the cross to the empty cross, to the stone rolled away, to our interceding Lord Jesus Christ, seated at your right hand, to the gracious gift of your spirit, we seek your forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Savior. We draw upon your promises, and we ask once again, simply for mercy. With your Holy Spirit, sanctify us. Hear our prayer, O Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Now, please take a moment for silent confession. Amen. Friends, I invite you to hear the assurance of pardon. The God who challenges us is also the God who encourages us. 
The God who confronts us is also the God who accepts us. Be assured that God is with us even now, accepting, guiding, and forgiving. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as you are able and join together with us in our response from Softly and Tenderly. I want to invite any children who are worshiping with us who would like to come forward for the time with children to come forward now. that this bingo got put. Oh. And when I was playing baseball, this bingo got put because the ball hit the bat and it hit my hand. That's true. You got hit by a pitch while playing baseball. I think you're going to live. Thank you for sharing. I just wanted to tell them that. <coughs> okay. I think they all heard because there's a microphone. All right, friends. Let's talk. So today I want to talk to you about something. I want to talk to you about doing new things. Who likes to do a new thing? I do. Ooh, we have a lot of new thing people. Who doesn't like to do a new thing? You can raise your hands too. Does anybody out there not like to do a new thing? I don't like to do new things. Oh. So what, one of the stories that we're going to hear today from the Bible is about Jesus' disciples after Easter. Jesus wanted them to go and do a new thing. Jesus wanted them to go tell people that Jesus was alive, that God had made Jesus alive again, and that there was a chance to come and be part of God's family. But they didn't want to do it. Do you know what they wanted to do instead? They wanted to go fishing because they used to be fishermen. And so they ran away and they went fishing and they fished all night and they caught no fish and they were so discouraged. And Jesus went out with them on the boat and then they caught lots of fish. And Jesus said to them, I asked you to do a new thing. Why aren't you doing the new thing I asked you to do? So a bunch of us are going to have to do a new thing. I have to do a new thing. This is my last Sunday with you. I have to go somewhere else and do a new thing somewhere else. And you guys have to do a new thing. You have to train a new pastor the right way to do things. You have to figure out what you want to be and how you want to do it. And so as we do new things, sometimes it's going to be hard, right? But we're going to pray for each other and we're going to take care of each other and we're going to love each other even when it's hard. Does that sound like something we can do? All right, I'm going to pray. You ready? 
gracious God, help us to do the new things you ask us to do, even when they're hard, even when we'd rather do old things. Help us to trust in you and follow you to the new things. We ask these things in your son's name. Amen. All right. I think there is Sunday school. If you would like to go to Sunday school, you may go to Sunday school. If you are worshiping with your family, you can talk with your family about that. may be seated. Now listen to our first scripture lesson. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to the saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to pro proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, saying, He is the Son of God.
have to stand on the box so I can be as tall as you. <laughs> so what happens when you stand up here with me? Friends, I invite you to listen now to our second scripture lesson from the gospel according to John chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. Listen for the word of the Lord for you this day. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there, there were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and the other two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and they got in the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat, and then you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were able to haul it in because there were so many fish they could not pull it in. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes where he was naked and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far off from land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there, and the fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went on board and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and they did the same with the fish. Now this was the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter felt hurt because he said it to him a third time. Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything I know, that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not want to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said, follow me. Friends, join your hearts together with mine in prayer. Gracious God, by the work of your Holy Spirit, open these words of scripture to us and the meditations that we are about to share, that they might be the word of God proclaimed this day for this congregation. Amen. Uh, no, that is not a typo on your bulletin. We are actually doing this uh, I never imagined myself standing here delivering a message like this. This is definitely not my specialty. Um, but I feel that it's time for all of us to step out of our comfort zones and take on different things. That's the way we've always done things. How many times have we heard this simple phrase? I know I've heard it many times and have joked about it in the use of our meetings and such. I think back to a time growing up in this church the Sunday school rooms were packed with children of all ages. We had a youth choir led by Mrs. Belinsky. Most of, some of you know Mrs. Belinsky. We had a very active youth group. The pews of this sanctuary were full most every Sunday. And if you showed up late for Christmas Eve service, you probably had to stand in the back. There are a lot of new faces, but some are the same. And you are probably sitting in the same spot you sat back then also. <laughs> As a youth, I looked up to these familiar faces for guidance and wisdom 
Now, as an adult, I have the privilege of working with them, trying to make our church a better and stronger place. We are faced with ever-changing times. We cannot keep saying, that's the way we always do things. We must look for and embrace new ideas and ways of thinking. This morning, we meet Saul as he approaches his <clears throat> conversion moment. See, Saul is serving God just as he thinks he was called to do by persecuting the church and the disciples. And Saul is exceptionally good at his job. He is so good at his job that he is known throughout the entire community for how good he is at persecuting the church. So I imagine that he was pretty surprised when it turned out that all of his religious certainty was for nothing and it got taken away from him in an instant. I imagine that the very last thing that Saul thought was going to happen was to meet Jesus on the road and be confronted by the consequences of the choices he had made. Saul was so very sure that he knew what God was inviting him to, and he was so remarkably wrong, staggeringly wrong even. He was so very wrong that God met him on the road and took away his sight for a season. He was so very wrong that God left him wandering so he could learn to trust in God. Religious certainty is a strange thing. I find that the more I'm sure that I know, the more that God cha challenges me to see things broader or more differently. God is challenging us just like he challenged Saul in our first reading. He is taking away our pastor like he took Saul's vision. God is calling us to take a hard look at things and focus our vision to make good choices and realize what God has called us to do. We meet the disciples today in a post-Easter moment this morning. They are scared and tired. They are alone in the world. They want to go back to what is familiar and easy. They want to go out fishing to do the job that they knew before and to do it in the same old way. So they go with the hope that they can just go back to their old lives, their old jobs, their old way of doing things. But they can't go back. Much as they want to fish, their nets just keep coming back empty. So they return to the beach where Jesus greets them. In our second reading, God challenges Peter and the disciples with empty fishing nets. Jesus appears to the disciples and tells them where to cast their nets. The disciples did not realize it was Jesus until they pulled up their nets and the nets were full of fish. God is also challenging us to cast our nets and be grateful. We should celebrate every fish and give thanks for them. We cannot afford to be picky fishermen in these lean times. I'm constantly amazed at all the wonderful folks God has invited to this place. God has challenged people to step up and share gifts. God has invited in new people. The challenge is for us to be willing to let them in, to invite them to share even if they don't do things the way we have always done things, to trust in them even when it is different or hard for us. God is already doing amazing, wonderful things here. But can we choose to follow God in this new way? Can we let go of the temptation to be ruled by the past? Can we accept the present and the future that God promises? I hope that unlike Saul, we are not so ruled by religious certainty that we miss the obvious presence of God right here, right now. You have everything you need to be a vibrant church well into the future. You can share the gospel with members and friends. You have generations <clears throat> worshiping together in the pews. The challenge is that's not the future we imagined for ourselves. The challenge is, are we willing to live into that? Can we let go of needing to have things our way? Can we let go of wanting to things to be like the past and embrace the idea that they might need to be like the future. <clears throat> when Jesus speaks to Simon Peter and they, after they go fishing together, he issues him a challenge, and it's to care for each other. 
he asks Simon Peter three times if he will care for the sheep in the flock. And the challenge in this moment is how are you going to care for each other? How are you going to support your leaders? How are you going to love one another? I will ask at this time, all elders, please stand if you're possible. If you're an elder, elder please stand. standing. <laughs> Can I have all of our deacons please rise also? Ladies and gentlemen of our congregation, this is the leadership of our church. We, we, are, we as the leaders of our church need to work together and cast out our nets. We need to welcome every catch and give thanks to God for what he is giving to us. Please be seated. Amen. Friends, I invite you to join with us in singing, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. You'll find it in your bulletin. Friends, please be seated. I want to invite our communion servers to come forward at this time. Friends, this is God's table and it has been set for all of you. This is not a table for people who are members of Trinity. This is not a table for people who belong to a particular club. This is a table for all who desire to come forward and commune with God, offering up their sins for forgiveness, receiving reception and welcome into God's family. People come from north and south and east and west to sit together at this table. Know that you are invited. Wherever you have come from, whatever you are going through, God <laughs> desires to meet you here. Friends, let us join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we ask that you transform these ordinary elements of juice and of bread into an extraordinary meal that we have together. Help prepare our hearts and minds for the journey that is ahead and open us to your work that is ever before us. We know that from the beginning you have challenged your members to go out and do new things, to experience new things, to live in the world in new ways. Help us to trust in you this day and every day to be willing to follow you where you lead, to be fed at this meal so that we can go forward with energy, imagination, and love. Amen. <laughs> Friends, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, 
saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the meal, he took the cup and poured it out and said to his disciples, this is the cup of the new covenant, my blood shed for the forgiveness of sins. As often as we drink of this cup or eat of this plate, we proclaim Christ's saving death until he comes again. And I invite for you to come forward by the center aisle to receive the elements. In the plates, there are pieces of bread and cups of grape juice. If you would rather have a pre-sealed package, there's a basket that has pre-sealed packages in them. Whatever your comfort zone is, is the right choice for you. We invite you to come forward as you are invited by the deacons.
Friends, the body of Christ, the cup of salvation, take ye, eat, and drink all of it. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you that you meet us here this morning, that you meet us in the sacrament of baptism, and that you meet us at this table. Continue to transform our hearts and minds so that we might follow your will more carefully. Continue to open us to your work, which is ever before us. We give thanks for this meal and for all who have partaken of it with us. Amen. Friends, I invite you to give as you are able to our offering. Our offering goes to help the ministry and mission of the church, both here in our community and all around the world. So let us return to God a portion of the blessings that we have received. Amen. Suddenly 
Please be seated. Can I have John and Natalie and Calvin come forward, please? <laughs> we have a blessing prayer for Godspeed. The scriptures are filled with stories of people who have been called to move to new places. Abraham and Sarah, Mary and Joseph, Paul and Barnabas, Priscilla and Aquila, filled with uncertainty about what laid ahead. These people of God could not have found their moves easy, yet they were also filled with excitement, trusting that God has calling them and guiding them to the new place. And now our beloved pastor and her family are preparing to leave us and go to a new place a new home, new friends, and a new church. As a part of this body of Christ over the past years, you have given yourselves in ways that we have appreciated and will miss. Here the past, oh, sorry. <clears throat> we ask God's blessing upon you as we lift up our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, you have created the wide and wonderful world in which we live. We praise you for your constant care, for those who have trusted you in ages past, who have journeyed in faith to new lands of promise. We trust now that you will hold the Bear family securely in your hands as they follow your call to a new place. May they take with them hearts filled with love and grace that those with whom they live and work may see in their face of Jesus Christ. Bless them that they may, be, may have your blessing. Amen. Jen, John, Natalie, and Calvin, may God's richest blessings be with you. Friends, I invite you to join your hearts with mine for our prayers of the people. Gracious God, we give thanks for all the good that you have brought into this world, for the ways that you have changed us and invited us forward, for the ways in which you have confirmed our faith, and for the ways in which you have challenged us. We give thanks for the gift of the church and for the invitation to care for each other. We pray for those who mourn people who we've lost. We pray for those who are away from us due to sickness. We pray for those who have been divided because of hurt feelings or hard moments. Help us to know how to include those who are far off. Help us to know how to reach out to those who have felt hurt. Help us to show your love today and every day. Help us to continue your mission and ministry, loving our neighbors and inviting them in that we might live as Jesus calls us to. Let us pray together using the words he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> Friends, I'm going to suggest that we skip our hope is built on nothing less for the moment and save our benediction for at the close of the congregational meeting. I'm going to suggest we let our families who are here for the baptism sneak out so they can go to whatever baptism celebrations they have planned if it was not a congregational meeting. <laughs> and we prepare ourselves to start our congregational meeting.